John Merchant from Ghosts of Sunset. You're listening to the Brutally Dis- Delicious Podcast. Where are you guys located? I'm up here in northern Michigan. Oh, okay. So uh, right in Michigan, on the west side of Michigan. My partner Todd's in Florida, of all things. Oh, nice. That's yeah. beautiful. So you're cold as hell, and he's nice and warm. <laughs> exactly. I'm driving through, you know, snow drifts and misery, right. and he's telling me that, oh, my gosh, it's cold. It's 65 out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about uh, Ghost, of Su- or Ghost of Sunset. Um, sure. for, th- for those not familiar as I wasn't until I Hadley hit me up. Um, can you give us the two sentence boardroom elevator pitch? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Ghost of Sunset, you know, is an, a 1980s kind of hair metal, hard rock influenced band. Uh, that's also open to a wide range of influences. You know, my partner Todd and I have been in the music business, touring, recording, writing uh, for 30 plus years across all sorts of genres. So it's really... It's got its roots in 1980s hard rock, um, but is open to pretty much anything that, you know, anywhere a good song comes from. Right. And I, I think that's probably why I, once I started listening to it, I identify with it the most because I grew up in the, or my formative years were the 80s. So that sort of genre is, you know, my wheelhouse. Right. Yeah, mine too. Mine too. And, and you know, I grew up in a, um, a country music household, so I, I love old oh, country music. Gotcha. Um, you know, a lot of 1960s, 70s rock and roll, Stones, Zeppelin, Aerosmith, Mott the Hoople, uh, Slade, Sweet. Bowie. All of that stuff had direct influence on the 80s stuff, though, right? I mean, but direct. it's not and it's not like I came to that first. I, you know, I would get into a band, you know, I'd start liking a band and then I would start going back. You know, if if they were talking about, you know, um, early Cooper and Bowie and. And, um, you know, the sweet and Slade, of course, we, we got Slade from Quiet Riot, right? Right. You know, it's when the older kid down the road said, dude, that Slade tune that you like so much is, or that Quiet Riot tune you like so much is a Slade song. You go back to Slade and, right. then, and then you can see that lineage, right? I think um, musicologists, which I kind of fancy myself, we can get from, I can get from Faster Pussycat to Rod Stewart and the faces pretty fast. You know what I mean? Right. It's funny you mentioned Fast the Pussycat because that is probably, and maybe it's an unpopular opinion, but one of my favorites from that whole genre. I, and I'm with you. I've, I've said it too, and I was recently yeah. talking to somebody about it, um, that uh, I believe that that first Pussycat album, had it been released at a little bit of different timing, I think it could have been as big as Appetite for Destruction. Oh, yeah, I agree. And this is going to probably get me canceled from everywhere, but I like it better than Appetite. I really love that record. Dude, me too. Me too. We're on the same page. I think Appetite's a great record. I, oh, I love that. absolutely. Um, Faster Pussycat, for me, had a little more of that late 70s punk thing I like. It had the bluesy... Um, the bluesiness of the faces and the stones. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I just really, I think that Pussycat debut and the next one. Um, Is that whip. the one with Whipped? Yeah. No, sorry, Wake Me When It's Over was the next one. That had House, House of, Pain, of Pain, Poison Ivy, some great songs. Is that the one with House of Pain as well? Yeah. yeah that was a good record. Yeah, great record. I've been a fan of them forever, though. I mean, I like pretty much everything he's done, even the newly deads that came later yeah. in the 90s and... I kind of like that. Soldier, man. He is, he's been in the game a long time. He, uh, he's still out there. The last touring lineup of Pussycat, um, with Sam and Ronnie on guitar. I mean, they had a great, they were sounding great the last tour. So, right. You know, there's a lot of rock and roll left in those guys. I just don't think they ever got their, their due. They didn't. 
You're absolutely right. They did not. And they deserved a lot more than they got. Anyway, sorry. That was a little. Yeah, that's our Pastor Pussycat section of the show. <laughs> yeah, it's a little <laughs> divergent. Sorry. Um, so are you guys planning on taking Ghost of Sunset? If you get so far apart, are you planning on taking this on the road at all? We're doing anything you know what? live? That comes up a lot. Um, as you probably know, in the business, you know, touring is not what it used to be. And Todd and I toured the country in a former band. Um, and so right now, logistically, it, it all comes down to travel logistics and money. Everything's money, right? Right. Um, we would like to put a band together and do a few limited things. Uh, but then you're getting into flying people places. You're getting into rehearsal space, which is doable. Um, but as of right now, if you see Ghost of Sunset, it might be like an acoustic duo kind of stripping the songs down and going to play them. So do you have a band or are you going to hire people to go out? We'd hire a road band for sure. The The records are Todd and I um, pretty much exclusively. We are um, our first full, well, the EP uh, headed West that we did on golden robot and the follow-up no saints in the city. We had a model where we were bringing in just artists. We liked to like do the guitar solos. So we had, you know, Tracy guns from LA guns, um, Mark Knight, who was in Bang Tango. Right. Um, you know, I could go on and on. Even the new record, we we used one guest guitar player on the new record. We used uh, R Ricky Dover Jr. from Tuck Smith and the Restless Hearts. Okay, not familiar um, with that, but... Yeah, killer band. Um, but yeah, to tour, we would have to put something together specifically for that purpose. So with you guys being so far apart then, are you you're taking advantage of technology? Is that how you write music, or do you ever get together in a room? Big time. Um, Todd, if he gets into town, we try to spend some time together and and write. But mostly nowadays, to be honest with you, it is it's file sharing. It's 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 even video chatting when we're right. arranging. A lot of texting. Um, a lot of voice memos. You know, I get a lot of voice memos from Todd that might just be him humming a melody or saying, you know, let's try going up here or we need a guitar doing this. So right. technology. Yeah, you know, we started making music on quarter inch tape, analog right. tape all playing in a room together um something's lost in it when you don't have that group dynamic i agree but it streamlines the process for us too yes. you know so it's a little column a little column b but we're grateful that we're able to do it uh the way we do it you know so when you're writing then are you writing i don't know if this is even applies to you guys but are you writing for like the song how it's going to come across live or are you writing a song for the song's sake that's a great question, man. Um, no, we uh, live comes up. I mean, we talk about it, especially um, on Headed West or the first EP and even Saints. I mean, we do picture a room full of people experiencing it and, and singing along. And you want those choruses and you want those those hooks. You know, that's a big thing for us. Um, so, yeah, we keep it in mind. But again, if a song in our case, if, if there was a song we couldn't deliver live, um, that doesn't mean we wouldn't give the song what it wanted. Right. You know, we, we let the song dictate what happens. So you'd still record it, just not play it live or something. Right, right. And and you know what? Fortunately for us, all these songs, um, I think, certainly for Todd and I, we grew up playing live music. You know, we were back in the day, you know, we were every weekend, three, four nights a week, you know, playing four sets of covers, you know, 10 to 2 in the morning. Right. Back when smoke in the bar you know <laughs> um yeah so we do come from a generation that believes in the ability to deliver material in a live setting so we'd love to go out and do that right so record came out i guess what friday mm -hmm. what's been the yeah. response to it so far i've only heard afterthought but what's been the response to the the record as a whole really good man we've been really blessed you know um response has been good people can hear the influence and you know i call it the uh, i've never heard of the beatles syndrome where you have these bands who you know be in an interview and say oh you know i've never someone will go hey that sounds beatly and they'll go oh i've never listened to the beatles or oh i don't know who elvis presley is right. or whatever um people can hear the influence in the songs and i like that you know you'll hear pussycat you'll hear the faces you'll hear um you know black crows or whatever right uh, and People are responding to that because, you know, man, we're making music for people who love music. That's it. It's right. just like coming to the house to listen to records. The difference is, the only difference is, 
we're making the songs, but I, we share them in the same way. You know, I want people to dig the songs. I like them. I try to take myself out. You know, you pick your own voice apart or God, I wish that guitar did something different or whatever. Right. But when you get yourself out of the way, ultimately, we're just sharing songs with friends. It's no different than, you know, you hopping in the car and me going, hey, man, this band Van Halen put an album out. You got to right. hear. Them. So we've been lucky. We fought, we've found an audience of people who love music, who appreciate good songs and um, and who have tuned in ears. They Sometimes they'll hear something and go, oh, I hear that, and that'll be dead on. And then someone will go, hey, I hear this other thing, and I'll go, man, I never even thought of that, but I can hear it now, too. Right, so, so like a collection of all your influences and your and your past. That's what we're supposed to do, I think. I don't think, um, I, I mean, I love Todd Long, my partner there. He's a great writer and musician. I don't think either of us are capable of reinventing music. So we might as well grab into the big song and take our piece, you know? Yeah. I mean, and I, you know, there was a reason that music was so big for so long, right? I mean, because it's so relatable and it's it's about having a good time and about hanging with your buds and about well, all that kind of stuff, right? It, it was great for that. It was, it, you know, it, it. I still believe this. And we went, and I'm not like, I'm not a grunge music hater or anything. I mean, I'm wearing a flannel shirt now, but it's because <laughs> I live in. in. Right. Um, I don't hate that music. I like what it did. We had gotten overblown. We'd gotten bloated. It was time for something different. Just like, you know, just like uh, the Pistols and the Ramones did in the 70s. You yeah. know, we had Journey in Boston and, you know, REO, these big productions and big, Emerson, Lake and Palmer or whatever. Right. So just like that, that happened. It's the cycle, man. It always happens. And then it always we strip it back and we we recreate it. And um, and the cycle keeps going. And now, I think 1980s style um, rock and roll um, is is more popular than it, it had been in years. I mean, the 90s were a dark time for a lot of my heroes. Yes, you know? and a lot of them didn't make it through it either, uh, alive or career wise. Didn't make it. You know, we lost. We talk about him a lot. Um, I believe the uh, although it was drugs and alcohol, of course, but I think the game as I like to call it, I think the game ate up Janie Lane. I yes. think it killed um, And had he been able to just deal with his mental health and his substance abuse issues, both of which I have, um, I it, he could have waited around. And when that cycle had came again, weren't, you know, are still touring. Right, um, and Tom Kiefer, all that kind of stuff, right? They kind of hung out. Tom Kiefer's got one of the best bands on the road right now. Yeah. Um, you know, Tesla are doing a residency in Vegas, I heard. I know, yeah. Um, the stadium tour. I mean, so I think if Janie could have held on, um, I think he would have started to be appreciated for what he did, what he was, and the caliber of songwriter he was. Yeah, I you know, know, I definitely miss him for sure. But I mean, there's, you know, there's, you, the, the list is endless, but Kevin Dubrow, all those people. Oh, man. You know, there you go. Kevin, another great example of a guy who, who you know, it's hard when you give... Um, <laughs> A twenty-some-year-old kid, X million dollars. He his record climbs over Thriller to make number one, and right. you expect to handle it somehow gracefully. You know he couldn't do that. Yeah, and he spent most of his adult life kind of trying to make amends for that behavior. You know, Kevin in his later years was a really gentle, loving, appreciative guy, um, who like uh, many of us, not all of us, uh, but many of us you know, also had those demons and those are hard to come to him. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame. Yeah. Love Kevin. But yeah. So, I mean, you know, the, I, I, to your point, I think the music or that sort of music is making it sort of come back, especially in Europe. There's a really big, like, I don't want to say glam metal, but sort of that scene, yeah. air metal coming mm -hmm. alive in, in Europe now. That's quite Beautiful. large. Beautiful. Beautiful. Because like you said, man, it, it was it was good time music and it did feel good. And it does touch a place in us that harkens back to simpler times, much like, you know, I could never understand it as a young man. You know, you'd go, why is, you know, why are mom and dad listening to this dinosaur music or whatever? It's because it brought them back to yeah, that. connected them back. And music has, I think, unlike anything else, any of the other senses, I mean, I could be in the car driving and some song will come on. I'm instantly transported back to right. wherever, like junior high school, you know, crushing on the girl next to me or whatever yes. it is. 
Yeah. It's vivid. Yes. It's like you're there. Yes. It's, it is, it is one of it's, you know, that music, when you love it the way folks like you and I do, um, it will, it will burn <sighs> memories in your mind. You know, it'll, it'll create those things for you and you can have them back. Like you said, you, you throw it on in the car and you can go back there real Instantly. quick. Yeah. And it's like, you're there. I love it. That's what music's for, man. Yeah. And so just to back back up for one second, in the words of the immortal prophet, Brett Michaels, it's nothing but a good time, right? That's nothing but it. Well, you know what? I wish it were more good times for sure. I mean, I yeah, always yeah. Part, but yeah, you know, back and, and I will say this about ghosts, um, subject matter wise, storyline wise, we do, we try not to be overinflated or too um, heavy handed. Um, it's not all good time music, quote unquote, but there is a lot of that in it because, um, because I think that's, there's something about relief, you know, and a break from the day to day, especially Escapism. nowadays. Yes. Today is, I mean, you know, not but that the 1980s weren't a heavy time. I mean, I remember growing up and thinking any minute we were going to be a nuclear bomb would go right. off and the show would be here sure. or Cuban, right? Right. Or I'd, you know, I'd have to red dawn it up in the mountains or something. But um, the good news is it's it's heavy now, too. And I think people are starting to to seek out some sort of relief from that. And boy, this style of music will do it for you every yeah. time. And darn near better than anything else you can get your hands on. So, yeah, I agree. And I'll be the first to tell you, you know, I listen to a lot of heavier stuff, too. And for different cool. reasons, I think it's very cathartic and and it definitely. And a lot of that heavier stuff, you know, shines a light on the situations we're going through. But stuff like you guys are doing intentionally doesn't, and it takes right. you away from it. Right. Well, and you know, that's, and there's room for all of that, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I say this going back to Janie Lane. You know, people laugh, cherry pie, ha, ha, ha. And, and you know, the heavier bands, I can see where you would get a laugh out of that for sure. What people don't understand is someone at a record label told Janie Lane, Hey man, we we need a love in the ele a love in an elevator. We need something like that. And the man went home and wrote Cherry Pie. And whether you love it or hate it, you can sing the chorus right now. Absolutely. That's songwriting. As as and it's as important as the stuff I grew up on. Like, you know, I grew up on a lot of new wave of British heavy metal stuff. So you're talking priest, priest you're talking yeah. Bass, you're talking Saxon. Um, Saxon, thank you. Um Diamond Head, which yes. influenced right. All of that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm in seventh grade, you know, and, and my English teacher thinks I'm a genius who reads poetry. I wasn't. I was a burnout who listened to Iron Maiden. Right. So I could talk poetry. I could talk some history. I, I was going to say, and you can talk history because it was. Of me. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I for me to be standing up in seventh grade, Mrs. Kestelut's class and. And quoting Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner, it was not because I was reading that, you know, right. it's because I loved Iron Maiden. Right. You know, which is cool, too. Right. I mean, that's great. Oh, yeah. And like you said, there's room for all of that under the umbrella, I think, of of music in general or rock or whatever you want to call it. There's some great music out there right now. It's it's funny. It's easier to find than ever before. Music's easier to get a hold of than ever yes. before. Um, and yet we don't, even myself included, I don't always seek it out, but when it comes across my radar, it is like, um, I'm amazed at just across all genres, yeah. how much good music I get excited. You know, I go, man, there's so much great music out there. Then I'm like, God, there's so much great music out there. And I'm supposed to put some out there too. You right. Know? So I get happy and then I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> yeah. that's what I like about doing this podcast, because we we talk to everybody like I started off this morning with Halloween. Oh, gosh, man. Love that. Talk about Maiden. Yeah. I mean, that was the first interview of the day and we've been all over the place to signed, unsigned everybody. And all the stuff comes across and in doing show prep, I'm finding all this great stuff. Right. And my playlist goes from, you know, like. Faster Pussycats, You're So Vain, all the way to like the Acacia Strain and some Deathcore stuff, and it's everything in the middle, and it's just music to me. Well, and that's the thing, and I think that's what we found with our audience, too. It's music, right? Um, and I, I I say it a lot. You know, I don't care where it comes from. A good song's a good song. Right. So to me, and mind you, I'm, I'm a, um, you know, I, I love that 80s hair metal stuff. I'm an Americana singer-songwriter kind of guy. I told you about the country stuff, but I remember hearing Lamb of God. Yeah. And I 
Okay, man, I heard redneck. I saw the video for redneck. And I went, man, I like this band. I could hear, um, you know, in Avenged Sevenfold, I can hear my mate. I am so sorry. Hold dog on one second. I'm going to go back and edit it. My dog is nuts. There's That's somebody walking. That's a big dog, isn't it? It's a great day, yeah. My wife wants one so bad, dude. Uh, this is number, I rescued them. This is number seven for me. Over How, the years. Are they? Best dogs my, ever. They're a great breed. Great super, dogs. Super gentle, super amazing. I mean, you know, you just got to get over the big stuff, but I would, yeah. I'm always going to have them. This one's yeah. a little bit of a, a challenge, but he's still great. He was found in a dumpster. Oh my God, man. Like Thank you eight for months old or something. And cool. Yeah. My wife's folks had one and, and they still to this day, just say it was the best dog ever. Yeah, I've got yeah. a lady. This is totally off topic, but I've got a lady here about an hour and a half. She has a farm and she oh. gets them from all over the country. They send them there and she rehabs them and does whatever and then adopts them out. And so I've been on her oh, list. Cool. For, yeah, this is number seven. They don't live long. So and especially yeah. when I get them, they're like six, seven years old and they've lived hard lives. So they're you know, they don't have many years left, but we but take the them on. Oh, good, all right. oh, that's killer, man. Wait till I <laughs> oh, well, maybe yeah. I should tell her. I should. <laughs> you told me how horrible they are you know no they're amazing i would never get another breed they're so m mellow and not My temperamental and that's good to know man yeah protective as well as you heard i mean nobody's coming <laughs> in the house that bark means business it, yeah. i mean i know they're gentle but if you heard that bark in the dark you're he's uh, about 155. the biggest i had was 176. 176. sam was 176. he was a horse wow yeah he was a monster wow but i had him all the way down to like maggie was about 110 112 What's somewhere in there. hovering around that 130 140 yeah usually it's around 130 140 i think loki might be a bit heavier than he should be but i'm spoiling him he's in his golden years and he was in the dumpster so good for you Go man. Eat. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> watching his weight's not an issue for no me. not at all because they only make it to like eight or nine years old yeah, that's the sad thing, right? Right. So, so you know, he's, he's getting up there already, so you might as well just keep eating those bones and hanging out on the couch. Yeah, he found the right place for sure. <laughs> anyway, back, to, uh, back yeah. to the band. So what do you guys have planned next then? You know, the hope next, I think, is um, I'm hoping another single. Um, again, we kind of let uh, Deco Entertainment handle that part of the business we've got you know we've got a full record of songs there that i think are worthy of of single release but we'll see what they think and uh we're already working on the next one we got one oh, really? in the we're working on the next one we try to stay pretty prolific we're always working uh the reason is um the attention span you know what the attention oh, i mean God, when, it's horrible when i was young when you were young i mean i could spend a year with an album i mean literally daily right it like was, reading the liner notes oh my listening God. to everything and seeing who you thanked and where it was recorded and who was the assistant engineer all that shit. yeah R right i mean there's no reason that i should know there's no reason i should know who martin birch is or ted templeman or right, Tito, right? um you know martin headmaster birch or <laughs> right all that stuff yeah. yep i loved it i so did you I, grow up reading kerrang Oh, I no in the I here I read a lot of Circus, Hit Parader, Metal Edge. My my first magazine was Cream. I read a ton of Cream magazine. Um, yeah, but same deal. I, I couldn't get enough of it. I mean, I'm a yeah. grown man, and you know, I'm I've got Zach Wilde's book here that I'm right. reading. I, you know, I I tell people all the time, I don't care if it's you know Black Label Society or Taylor Swift or the Backstreet Boys, if you're going to have a documentary about you on tour or your behind the scenes, I'm going to watch it. I'm the yeah. fastest to this day. Yep. Yeah. Cool I agree. stuff. I miss that. I, like I said, when I loved a band, um, oh, well, I'll tell you what, 1987, I had a denim jacket. I had Faster Pussycat painted on the back. It said it ain't easy being sleazy. Yep. And I can remember that being a fist fight situation. You know, oh, really? there was, dudes who were literally you know man the cats i went to school with yeah the, i tell you the the slayer dudes were not coming up and high-fiving you right and, and that's cool too i mean as an adult i love that 
guys like myself and those people, you know, we found our, we found our people, we found our place. You know, I wasn't the star of the football team. I, I obviously, I wasn't the greatest looking guy, right. but when I found music, it gave me, I mean, it gave me an armor. I could walk the halls, you know, I had my anthrax shirt with, you know, the knot man on the skateboard. Yeah. I was telling you right now, this is what I'm into. This is where I'm from. This is what I believe in. Yeah. And, and it was, um, and there was a community of it. And then back then, you know, we go to the hockey arena and we would powwow with a bunch of people who felt the same way we did. Yep. And um, there's nothing. I mean, and I got it as an adult when I saw the fifth reunion at Tiger Stadium. I'm from Michigan. So, so like 96? 96, right. They put their makeup back on. I was in eighth grade with a kid who in Woodshop, we were both Kiss fanatics. He goes, someday they're going to put their makeup on, dude, and we'll go. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to do that. Well, Kiss put their makeup back on and that it was like unheard it was never gonna happen right i wake up one morning and the phone rings it's pretty early it's my buddy chris from school who i you know i'm still friends with but i don't see regularly he goes kiss putting their makeup back on and going on tour we got two tickets nice so this music will hook you in a way that you remember a, a vowel like that from eighth grade yes and adulthood you will carry that out because it's kiss yeah right and we're 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 that's what we're into you know so i know we're totally all over the place but here's one for you um everybody's got like a sort of band or record or song that got them into this uh this thing so for me i'm going to tell you eighth grade or ninth grade wherever like junior high school walked into the corner record store and diary of a madman's on the wall and i knew oh. i had no idea who ozzy was at all right i'm living in this weird listening to whatever my parents are listening to, you know, the Beatles, yep. and I walk in, I see these records. I'm like, ah, what the hell? It looks pretty amazing. I'm going to take it home. And you know, the first few minutes of first few seconds of over the mountain, over the mountain. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It set me on this journey that, you know, 40 years later, here I am. Yeah. What beautiful. was yours? Um, I had a burnout uncle, man. It babysat us, you know, great guy, long hair. Um, kind of the same thing. Came over to babysit one night, puts on, it's raining, I'll never forget, it's raining and dark and my parents are gone. He puts on the first Sabbath album. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, I wasn't, I, I mean, I didn't jump up and go, yeah. I went, oh my God, It's. It, I was scared. The right, cover, you weren't mentally the, prepared for that riff. Right, the, the cover still freaks me out, the lady. and Yeah. Um, prior to that, I was, a, I, I'm a dyed in the wool, I will die, Beatles, Beatles did everything for me. Sure. They gave me everything everything i ever needed they they were they could be a hard rock band they could be you know um a country band they could be psychedelic they yeah. were the mop tops so that started the whole thing but right. for my hard rock it was that sabbath record and then um i did if you had you know leather pants tucked into cowboy boots and cool hair and you know a bolo tie you were in i'm in man and, yeah. and then, you know I, I was in a motley and I was in a quiet riot and I was in because I sure. grew up in the video era, right? right. That was popping. Um, but when I heard that, and this is sad, but when Vince Neil had killed this razzle guy, right? For this band I kept hearing about, well, Hanoi Rocks, I was, I, I mean, I'm looking at my Hanoi book over on the bookshelf. I, I thought that was, it was everything. It was bluesy, it, it was yep. fun, it was surfy. It was heavy. They looked great. Um, so what is next for you guys? And you said you're going to be working on new material. Yeah. Yep. We've, we're working on new stuff now. We got one in the can for, for what's coming next. Um, you know, and, and we're going to keep trying to grow it, you know, grow it and, and move it and, and keep connecting with people. And we've been, like I said, man, we've just been so lucky uh, to find such a great listening audience, attentive, um, they can hear those influences and um and yeah we're just gonna keep trying to make the best songs we can you know to share with people who love good songs right perfect um i think that hits all i wanted to cover i know we meandered quite a bit sorry if i was hey, everywhere but i like to talk so i do too man i do too so anytime you know we could always go on and on and on i just uh hopped on facebook uh started to follow your page so i'll oh, be and for those not familiar with you guys, how do they find you on? Are you guys pretty active social media wise? All the socials. Yep. Ghosts of Sunset will get you anywhere. Facebook, Instagram, all of it. 
Okay. Um, so yeah, check it out again. We've got the debut EP, which was headed West. Um, the follow up, which was no saints in the city. And now on Deco entertainment is the latest effort breathe. So we hope everybody checks it out and loves it. Sweet. Awesome. <laughs> I appreciate you taking the time man, and putting up with the nonsense. Hey dude, I'm so glad. Thank you for everything you do. Thanks for spreading the word. You know, just what a what a blessing. I appreciate Keep up the it. good music. And I guess ignore that letter from Hadley because you're going to get it saying cancel. Okay. It work, so. If there's anything we can do for you, of course, we'll share it, all of that. All right, perfect. If anything, will you let me know? Be glad to help. Absolutely. I appreciate it, man. And I got to tell you, I saw that you had an interview with uh, Brian Forsyth from Kicks. Yeah. Yeah. He played on our EP, Headed West. He's a oh, nice guy. He's a, and he's an old, he's just got more rock and roll swagger than anybody on earth, dude. I he's love old. his, um, I haven't looked lately because I've been trying to keep my distance from social media just for whatever, except yeah. for business stuff. But he used to post like all his carnivore Ooh. diet stuff. Did you ever yeah. see that? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. He still does it. He he's, still does? He's cool. He's cool. Yes, he does. He's cool, man. He's playing in Rhino Bucket and, of course, Kicks. Yeah. Kicks is those bands we were talking about, you know, still doing oh, it. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. All right, my brother. Anything hey, be well, my friend. Thank you for taking the time. Hey, thank you, Cheers. man. All right, bye.